What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3 and straight in to figure out what research I want to do first using the data disks. Remember that they're quite rare. Uh, it's very difficult to complete that research. It's where it gets difficult, I would say. So go through the researchers, figure out where you want to go, what you want to do. It matters. I believe I have 60 to 70 data disks uh, as, a, as an amount. That's should be enough to do one research for now. Uh, so I will need to get to other asteroids to unlock additional. Now to do so, I likely will go with the small petroleum engine. Uh, petroleum engines are good, um, certainly before you get to the liquid hydrogen, which is the best, but they're a good stopgap. They're better than steam. And where we're at at the minute and the way our base is going, petroleum is going to be an abundant resource, whereas steam is a no-go. So I'm going to go here, which gives me the small petroleum engine. Where I'm going to build it, I've got no idea because I don't know where the surface is. So I'm hoping it's still up. Because if I have to build, a, surely it won't let me build a rocket thing to the, to the side, right? I know it's not left and I know it's not down. Maybe I can't even leave, I don't know. Though it wouldn't let me build the uh, rocket stuff if, it, if I couldn't leave. So this is the fourth tier of research, which is using the data disks. You can see I have 60 exactly over there on the right-hand side. I believe that's enough to do one, maybe one and a bit, but certainly not two. But if we can get this rocket out, I'll get petroleum produced. We've got plenty of oil coming in. We've got infinite, infinite oil, actually. Um, now we've got those three things running. Just looking at the power, actually. And if you could see that number, it was quite small. And I wasn't there for very long. But it was fluctuating. It wasn't just going down. And if you look, the actual automations have turned off the coal generators. So we are surviving on alternate power. Likely heat, because you can see I have a lot of heat generators at this point pumping in energy into various different places. But that energy is now saving us coal. And eventually, I'm hoping that we can, well, basically just remove the need for the coal. It will always be there as a backup. And we do have a decent amount. What's that, 65 tons? 65 point. Okay, so it's looking good that the incubator room is completed now in terms of being built. Power-wise, not so much. There is a temperature differential in the Bristle Blossom Room. Far too warm for them to grow, as I said it would be. The light bulbs as well are not helping at all with that fact because, of course, they're constantly creating additional heat. Now, you could turn them off at night time. I don't really think that it matters because it will just stop them growing anyway. Um, you're not going to gain anything by turning off the lights because although it will cool down, the plants, of course will stop growing so there needs to be another way and cooling is the easiest way i can think of now there is this machine here i obviously need to put a platform down to do it but building that causes gases as it passes through now what happens is it drops them down to uh, by 10 degrees so whatever temperature you put the go the gas through the machine it will come out of the machine 10 degrees cooler Meanwhile, in the recreational room, I'm going to give them a few more of the items that we all locked a long time ago, but I've never actually bothered doing. So that's a surfing machine. Now, don't do that. Uh, I will find out a bit later on that that's no good because you need to put it somewhere where you don't mind water falling on the floor, i.e. on some liquid tiles or something. So we'll do that. Espresso machine, allowing us to give them a nice cup of coffee. All of these things give mood boosts, remember, as well as the music and the water cooler that is already in there. This is our recreational room, though, so I'm going to put everything in there that I can, though. There is a lot of power power requirements to do so. That is the arcade machine. And we have the telephone there where they can talk to themselves or their friends. Chuck three of those down. Looks a bit like the wait, uh, waiting room of a prison now, I think. But never mind. Also, the soda fountain, which uses carbon dioxide and water to make fizzy, well, fizzy water because there's no flavorings that I'm aware of. So we have now the arcade machine, surf machine, the soda machine, or pop machine, depending on where you're from, and of course the espresso with three oh. phone lines, a jukebox that was already there, and a water tower. 
Gives them plenty of options on what to do. Likely, I'm going to make another one of these just to make sure that there's a room. I'm not sure if the guys can get actually here in time. Now, wiring this up, I'll see what the numbers are when it's finished. Though that arcade machine requires 1,200 watts by itself, which is an extreme amount of power. In fact, that is the same amount of power a refinery uses. So, we'll need to look at how we can plumb that into the power lines without, of course, throwing them out of sync. The power lines are a lot cleaner now. I have cleaned them up, I believe. Um, so it's just adding to that fact and making sure I can find some, well, squeeze power out of other lines or make a whole new one with an additional transformer. Okay, so in terms of transformers, I need four. Four transformers to power the incubators without the pipe, sorry, without the power lines getting damaged. They're not going to be on all the time, remember. I am using the cycle timers to stop them from uh, causing havoc with my fuel and with my coal, more, more precisely. So there is two sweepers in there. I did that for symmetry. One does do it all, but it was on the wonk. It was over one square, so it was annoying me. So all I'm going to do is, um, they're already well, they're already set up. There is the chest as well, so I just need to tell the chests what to do and what not to do. The two central ones will be remaining. The ones on the outside will be taken out. Then each one of the incubator groups of threes will be set to a specific type of egg, as I like to call them, or egg as normal people call them. So that way we should start getting our ranch populations back up to speed, I hope. You can see there is a diamond hatchling in the incubator room currently. That is our first one of the game. There he is. Cutie, cutie, cutie pie. And he is, of course, going to eat abyssali and crap out diamonds. I mean, what more could you ask for? We have a few hundred tons of abyssali, so you can do the math there. The diamond, for now, is used for the temp shift plates where it's really hot to help out. Because they, obviously, melting point of just shy of 4,000 degrees not going to cause um, any issues there because there's nothing that's going to get that warm. Lastly, I can use it for decoration as well because, of course, its decor value is through the roof. And I believe it increases the decor around it by 100%. So basically doubles the decor value of everything or anything that is win within its remit. So as I slowly migrate over the eggs into this room, as soon as they arrive, the sweepers will place them in their relative incubation pods. You can see we've had some of the sun bugs already arrive they are in groups of three and there you go the third one is now up and running and you can see the smooth hatches the drecos are all also being delivered when i built these in it was just to fill up the space to match the the, the width of the building above for symmetry again there was no math behind it but what i do know is that there's 10 sets here and that's more than i actually do need also then moving forward depending on what critters i do or don't get uh, this will allow me to swap and change as I go. Hatches I am running out of. You can see my hatch population is down to five. That is no good. So likely I'll put six to them, depending on if I've got enough eggs. The, the important factor is how many eggs do you have? Because if you've only got one or two eggs and they're quite rare, then you don't need to assign three to them, right? But the, the Drecos, of course, three for each. So you can see there I've got three standard Drecos going and two glossy drecos going the uh, poke shells as well three eggs there running nicely so we'll just rotate it as and when we go i can put automations involved depending on how we do it but for now it is working as expected this room then the old incubation room can be tore out altogether, and we can use that for another farm in the future which should be nice to see what we can get again pips are a definite option uh, the slug bug grub slug no plug slugs there we go sorry plug slugs will be an option as well from the other asteroid hopefully in the next episode or two i will be moving over there at least two people making sure i'm going to plumb in the oxygen providers uh, and food first so that the the, the asteroid is already self-sufficient for oxygen which means to me then that the actual um the actual survivability will be simple I could even send over some Atmo suits and plumb in an Atmo gate, you know, the things that they 
changing to so that while they're actually working on that new asteroid they're always in Atmos suits and in fact I may actually do that that sounds like a plan so just perking up on the corner there top left hand corner you can see our oil refineries are working very well in fact they are now underwater that's underwater they are under oil that's no good we need to fix that so what I'm going to do is pull this right down level it up with the incubation room and have a huge massive storage facility for that also try and get some more of the cooling pipe in there to help bring that, cape, that, that temperature down I'm going to have to make sure I put plenty of ladders around there so they can reach all this because technically it's floating in mid-air though it is still doable and as you could see there it is we are now looking this this one bit of pipe is not being finished by pipe I mean rail but we can speed that up by turning it up to a level 10 this one is for what exactly this one is for taking any giblets out of the room it's only really going to be egg shells for the eggs that actually do hatch and fried eggs for the ones that fail to hatch I don't believe there's anything else that will drop in there. Obviously, there will be the odd critter. I don't think they will crap in there, though, specifically, because they wouldn't have eaten anything. So it is just likely to be the, um, the eggshells or raw eggs, whichever one happens first. Now, these remaining rooms, as I've said, I'm going to turn into ranches. No specifics yet to what type of ranch. So for now, I'll just put the basics in. And if they need something else, I can add that as and when I decide to actually make the room an actual room. All of them are going in on that right-hand side, right? Yes, yeah, so all of the ranches are active, uh, are, are doable by the right-hand side. I would like to put in the transport pipe and there's the diamond hatch dig again in his correct surroundings. Very good. Um, yeah, I would like to put the transport pipes into each of the individual farms so that whatever farm they need to go to, it gives them a quick way of doing it. But I'm not convinced it will work. I'll try it, actually. Now I've got the one that can go down the ladders or the pipes, I guess. Um, that should work. So I might try that a bit later on. Also, does anybody know? Them um, little house things, the little stalls they can get where they get the cosy buff. How many of them do you need? Does anybody know the answer to that? I mean, I've got two and a one. Maybe I should make more of those. I think I was short on reed fiber last time I tried. But obviously a cosy buff will make them as happy to lay any more eggs anyway so we're looking good obviously the hatchers as they are the stone ones there the smooth ones and then we have one diamond one the incubation room is working hard but we still need to open this up now now this shouldn't be too difficult to do because all I need to do is copy that door down to there yes and then get somebody to open up that floor and that will all fall through nicely. As soon as somebody does it, yes, it will be changed. That should fall down. Still got plenty of room then. The doors won't allow the liquid to the oil to escape. As long as you don't lock them open. If you lock them open, they will, of course. But on auto, they won't. And the actual second door up there can be removed I think as, as well as that ladder because this whole area is uh, useless now yeah I'll delete that try and extend down the piping as well to cover a bit more of that area and get that cooled down we don't want the oil getting out of hand in terms of temperatures we also need to try and start getting some of that natural gas collected as well before it builds up too high Actually, that don't matter as much because, again, they'll have their Atmos suits on so they won't get the pop tear drum. It's fine. Just got to wait for those pipes to be finished off now. A lot of the calling pipes are in there and I could or would like to maybe take it below the liquid. I'm not sure. I mean, technically, it is going to be below the liquid anyway because the oil is just going to build up and build up and build up. 
I'm just thinking though, that cooling system that I've got, can I run it through the incubator room as well? So basically the, the liquid will go through the oil room, the oil room and the natural gas as it is. Then into the incubator room or rooms. Then into the cooling room with the generators and rinse and repeat. Now it will take a lot longer for it to work, but it should over time work. Even if it keeps them cool, uh, we're just making sure we don't get no crazy heats coming out where stuff starts getting damaged or broken. That's my goal, anyway. Just switching around the automation here. I built it out of lead by accident, and of course lead is very weak. In terms of temperature anyway, it's very good at radiation. So I just need to flip this round to be not lead. Anything else will do. This is the shut-off valve that stops the gas from going into the cooler if it gets too cold. Now, it is gas, not liquid, so I don't have to worry about it freezing. But if you cool down a gas enough, it will turn into a liquid. But it's much more difficult to do, so I'm not that worried. Um, actually, it's just a safety net to make sure I can forget about it in the hopes that it works. The bristle berries need to be 27 degrees, I believe it is, or less to be growing. Um, keeping it around the 27 mark would be preferred. Now, I have put that in the wrong way around. Much better. So that will continue to go around now. Again, the more gas in there, the better, and I can add to it if it don't work. But I really need to leave these things running for a bit first. You can see I finished that, and as I said, I did indeed go through the incubation rooms as well as well as the just a quick small loop through where the machines are that are going to provide the electric transformers and again shut off valve that's there for two reasons if well actually no, it's just one reason if when it goes through the oil reservoirs it is above 50 degrees then it will send it straight for the call into the cooling loop if it's cooler than 50 degrees, it will send it through the incubation room to help cool that down as well. It's just so that I'm not spreading heat unnecessarily into the incubation room and making that more difficult to cool down at a later date. If you notice, those two sweepers have actually finished and managed to fill about... It was almost six, I believe, uh, six full canisters, so that's a lot of resources. Here as well, this is clogged up. Uh, it is only polluted oxygen though. Yes, polluted oxygen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it. Now by deconstructing it, all you're going to do is release that. So there it goes. So that massive amount of polluted oxygen is released into that area. I can then build another one to store the rest that comes in from the base. This is just a temporary storage. It is not the main storage. Um, I'm going to do that likely outside the base. I'm not sure where yet. I've got space for it, but these tanks that hold the gases i want to I, I sort of want four or five per gas and then i want to try and take all of the gas from the entire map and put it into storage so we should have a base floating in a vacuum I'm not sure if that's going to be possible and there is a lot more work to do a lot more gas pockets to unlock dig out and collect but you've got to start somewhere and somewhere we shall. This area from where the gold volcanoes were has needed to be cooled down for a while. So I've set up a... Uh, I say simple. I don't know if it's going to work. It's We'll figure it out as we go. As soon as we break open this abyss of light, that heat should transfer over, over the top of the generators that will start eating that heat and turning it into power. The temp shift plate should help move that heat over to more of them and drain it out. What I don't want is for the heat to escape this room. If it gets too hot, the machines will break. And that's not the end of the world. If they break but it doesn't get out of the room, I'll still be happy. I just don't want it to make its way out of this chamber. There is a hole at the top where the ladder goes through. Uh, it could potentially get through there, but I could also chuck one and buy 
one, I mean another generator on the outside just to make sure that doesn't happen. It's green out there at the minute, so that means it's reasonable in temperatures. They are going to absorb that heat as we go. Now, the liquid gold that is in there, that is liquid gold, not magma. As that cools down, it will eventually solidify, and then we can mine it back out again. If you get a full tile of gold, it just it solidifies into its ore. So like you can see the abyssalite there. If it's less than a full tile, you'll get the little cube squares that you get of the refined metals. Now that heat is transferring over. These temp shifts, of course, are diamond. So there's no issues with them uh, being damaged. Uh, the maximum they're going to get to is about 1200 degrees. And they are good to 3800 so we'll have to see how that goes. It's going to take a bit of time for the gases to equalise and the heat to transfer over. But we'll see what that's like in the next episode because we are at time now. So thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome as always. Subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.